It's a niece of the shade. They was dying by my car and now they peeping away. Hey guys, welcome back to another pretty and profitable podcast. Today is extra, extra special. We're going to talk about the principle of prolific. Prolific has to do with being plentiful, being a woman that leverages everything. And I couldn't think of someone <laughs> better than Nicole. So I want to introduce you guys to a good friend of mine, Nicole. Nicole, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wanted to just first just say thank you for coming because you just had a whole trip and you came back and, you know, did the interview. So thanks for being here. Of course. Uh, so, Nicole, can you tell people a little bit about yourself? So my name is Nicole Purvey. I am a real estate investor. I am also a general contractor. I am also the founder of the Better Than Success Real Estate League. It is a real estate club that helps facilitate new entrepreneurs that don't know anything about entrepreneurship and real estate investing into and real estate investing, as well as help transition W-2 employees to full-time real estate investing. It is a little, it's a lot different from a lot of people's mentorship programs because it's not a mentorship program. It is a system. It's run by me and nine of our other members who have demonstrated exemplary work as transitioning from W-2 to full-time investing. And mm -hmm. nine of us run this club. Um, and like I said, it's a system. We have a real estate, the world's first and only real estate AI mentor that I developed before ChatGPT came out. Before. before. <laughs> Check my receipt. Yes. <laughs> um, I worked on it for years. And yeah. we finished it last September. ChatGPT came out in November. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and so we're, we've been doing this. We started in 2016. We have been doing this, this work for a very long time. And we've helped hundreds of people, thousands of people transition yeah. from W-2 to full-time investing. And, you know, I also, I do like to say some people, we're not going to demonize having a W-2 job. Like there's literally yeah, nothing wrong with no. that. Um, But so some people want to keep their jobs and still right. invest in real estate. And so- mm -hmm. No matter where you fall on the spectrum in terms of loving your job, you need also real estate. Even if you Absolutely. love your job, you can be out here doing God's work, getting paid really good money, work short hours. Guess what? If something happens to you, you can't leave that job to your children. Right. Exactly. I so love that. We need to make sure that these working years that we have, that we are working to leave something to our children because the Bible our says- working years. A good man leaves an inheritance to for his children's children. <laughs> exactly. You can't do that with no job. You can't. You Especially the little corny four hundred one k they be giving out. Right. <laughs> that probably won't be here in a little while. But right. Exactly. Um. So you you focus on helping people transition from W two into investors, and a lot of people they don't have to leave their jobs. But say if there's a woman who's really interested in doing or learning from what you're you're doing, what would you suggest? How many doors or rental properties do you think a woman should buy to start building her financial wealth or creating financial freedom? Um, the reality to this answer is she really only needs one. Hmm. Now, is she going to be able to go and leave her job with one door? Absolutely not. But real estate investing as a full-time job is, like I said, is not for everyone. But if we're just talking about leaving something in this earth mm -hmm. to your children's children, you really yeah. only need one. Coming up with a hard number for someone who wants to be 100% financially free, if you really want to make real estate investing your full-time gig, coming up with a hard number to say, hey, this you should have this many doors, is very difficult because everyone's mm -hmm. needs, their wants, their circumstances are completely diff yeah. different. Mm -hmm. I know people who are very happy. They have a quad and they are very happy. I know people who have a great, they may own a one single family house. They might own it outright, or they just have a really good deal with a very low mortgage. That's just mm -hmm. enough. They're earning a couple extra dollars. That's just mm -hmm. enough to be able to make them sleep at night. Right. Yeah. Everybody yeah. has different needs and everybody has different ones. So I can't give a hard number. Now, if you get more specific with your question, you know, like, 
Well, I mean, what it sounds like you're saying is like, first, you have to like be able to define what it is that you want. Right. And once you know what it is that you want, then you can start like constructing the life, you know, door by door. Right. So whatever that number is and, and then put a little extra on for inflation right now to hello. You know. <laughs> Is beating us all up. Right. So I'm glad you said that because one of the things that we do uh, within our system in the Better Than Success Real Estate League is very early on is we have a goal setting session. And in that goal setting session, I, so let me kind of back up. Mm-hmm. I used to do one-on-one coaching calls. I don't do them anymore for a number of Please reasons. Please don't. <laughs> a couple of years ago. I don't do them for a number of reasons, yeah. but when I used to do them, I mean, I'm glad I did because it gave me a lot of insight into yes. what makes people tick, why, how people get to a success, why they don't get to success, mm-hmm. all that good stuff. But what I would find is that when people start out on this real estate investing journey or even entrepreneurship journey, they pull a number from the sky of what they want. So like people mm-hmm. say, I would like 10 doors and they'll say, I want 10 doors. And have it in his mind that 10 doors is going to get them to leaving their job. And then you find out how much do you make at your job? $150,000. Guess what? You're going to be very stressed with 10 doors. Yeah. <laughs> and so they they don't back into the number, right? right? And so we just say, okay, whatever it is that you wanted before, put that to bed. Yeah. Let's first say, what do you want? Let's back into the number. Hey, mm-hmm. if you're going to be doing multifam- uh, multifamilies, you're probably, if you invest right, a good number is maybe like three, $400 a door. So mm-hmm. let's do the math, right? And then after that, you still got to take into consideration taxes. Yes. Right? Yes. And then tack on more for inflation. So you're going to need yes. more than 10 doors. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's always important to start with the vision and yeah. then back into it. Mm, back it up. Back it back it back up into your... Right. Okay, okay. So... um. When I'm listening to you and just me actually meeting you and talking to you and knowing what you really do, seeing you in action. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We can let everybody know that we are friends in real life, okay? I <laughs> was about to get there. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like the same, same city. We do it. Yeah. But I was going to say that to really see you in action. Like, you know what I mean? It's It's been inspiring. Um, but as I watched you, remember what I said when... Uh, I left your event and I was telling you about that. You always drop it. So I know. Uh, but I was saying that like, it's time for us to be commanders. Right. In the space. But that's what I saw when I saw you in action. I saw a woman that was offline doing this right. Offline doing real estate, you know, general contracting, like, you have been really doing this and to see someone that really knows what they're talking about, that really does it. And all you're trying to do is just open the door for other people. You know, that's, that's what I saw in, in your action and your, your movement. Right. Um, but the other thing that I saw was there's a scripture in Proverbs 31 where it says, um, it says that she is a merchant wholesaler, Right. That she makes these, uh, I mean, I'm, it doesn't say she's a merchant wholesale. I'm sorry. It says that she makes these belts and and she sells them to the merchants, right? And what I realized is what you created is you have positioned yourself in a market where if you don't do it, it won't get done, right? And so that was the same thing about this Proverbs 31 woman. She was a merchant wholesaler, which meant that she was an irreplaceable, one of the definitions for a merchant wholesaler is that she's an irreplaceable participant in indirect sales, right? So if she stops, nothing happens, right? And so you've cornered, you've, you, you have built this um, business. You started in Philly. I already know, you know, you're expanding out to different places, but we talk about you being prolific and the original scripture was about her inspecting a field, buying it, and with her earnings, she plans a vineyard. But I think other aspects that I see in you is that you're a commander, first of all, in your space. And then the other thing that I see is that if you don't do it, it's not going to get done. It don't get done right, right? Because not only are you a real estate investor, but you're a, con- you're a general contractor. So 
you are doing the model that even Nipsey talks about, which is being integrated vertically. You all the money is coming back in. And so I think women, we need to see more women doing that. We need to embody the 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 principles of this, but really know what it takes. So with all of that said, what do you think um, helped you become a woman that is like cornering a market in regards to real estate investing and, and being impactful offline? Not even, you know, showing all that you do. What do you think that you need to have to be that woman? You dropped a mouthful. Okay. I have so much to say. This is a great topic because um, no one talks about any of this. So when I have conversations with like my 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 mentees and like people that are very close to me, I, mm -hmm. I drop I drop this. I don't go in business. I don't go in business to see somebody doing something and then say, oh, I want to do that. I back, I approach business, any venture that I do from a very unique standpoint. Okay. First of all, the first principle is I like to fly higher because there's less traffic up there. So I don't want to do what everybody else is doing mm. because mm. it's less traffic. If you just think a little bit bigger, it's yes. less people doing yes. the exact same thing. And I like to be in a category of one. Yes. I don't want to be doing what everyone else is doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. But you can't just say, oh, I'm just going to do anything that no one else is doing, right? You have to find a niche where there is a need and solve problems. Now, yes. not just any old problem, mm -hmm. a problem that people have a burning desire to solve. Yes. yes. So you make yourself irreplaceable. Yes. This is yeah. how you bring value to the world. Like, yeah, everybody wants to make more money, right? Like mm -hmm. we were in a crowd and audience. I could say, how many people want to make more money? Every single person will raise your hand. You got a couple of people that just will not raise right. their hand. <laughs> right. <laughs> but everybody will raise their hand, right? Right. And I always say, I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it. Money is just a spiritual representation of God's reward to you for helping yes. his other children. Yes. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So find out how you can help more of God's mm -hmm. other children. Mm -hmm. The money is going to come. It's going to come. So find out how you can bring more value mm -hmm. to the world. Yeah. Not just, oh, these people are doing this. And that seems like a really cool thing I want to do because they're making mm -hmm. money. So I'm going to do it too. Mm -mm. That's how you will play yourself. You know how many people have tried who've seen what I do and have tried to duplicate what I do and have fallen flat on their face? Yeah. It's not their assignment, first of all. It's, it's not, not their, their assignment. assignment, first of all. Mm -hmm. Second of all, I'm already doing it and doing it well. Doing it and doing it and doing it well. <laughs> you doing it very well. Right. <laughs> Right. But you have years, you have years of experience and you can't come in. You have to be willing to be okay with starting at year one at the six months and, and not looking like the person that you like, don't try to do that. Starting your journey, learn from that person. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, in terms of making sure I make myself irreplaceable, I look for lanes that it's just not a lot of traffic. It's so high. There's not a lot of traffic. Like for instance, my real estate club, we have almost 600 recordings in our back office. We have a real estate AI mentor that I developed. Yeah. I actually tried to pay somebody to do it. They couldn't do it. I used to be a web designer. Yeah. It took a little bit of work because I was dusty yeah. and rusty, but I built it. Yeah. Not only that, it's not just me. It's nine of us. Not only mm -hmm. that, we got five up to five live events that we are doing every week mm -hmm. up to five of them mm -hmm. so like that's not easy to duplicate yeah it's you're already in you already rolling you can't right. roll how you rolling you already rolling so yeah. I, what i would say to anybody is one be okay like you said be okay yes. with beginning right mm -hmm. this is not the day of hum humble beginning yes mm -hmm. but think about how you can create something in the long term, right? And there are ways, there are going to be pit stops of, in the ways where you can make money, yeah. right? But in the long term, think about how you can make something that solves very efficiently, like make sure your product is really good. Make sure it solves very efficiently some need 
that people have. Mm -hmm. And be thinking five and 10 years out. Yes. yes. It's not going to look like the 10 year product. I always say like, hey, uh, you know, it, it right now we're at like maybe fate, version three or version 12. Right, you know, right. It's okay. You can make money at version one, two, and three. Yeah. Or five. You can make version all the way up to version money all the way up to version 12. Mm -hmm. But be thinking about what version 12 looks like mm -hmm. and how you can make it so undeniable. I call it the Beyonce effect, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not even a huge Beyonce fan, but I wouldn't dare say anything in terms of her talent. Oh, no. Bad about her because she's. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. She's a great singer. She's a great writer. Mm -hmm. great. Yes. Her body. I was just actually looking at somebody posted some pictures and I was like, listen, this woman must don't have a cycle because every <laughs> picture, her body looks exactly the same. Right. She ain't bloated enough. <laughs> Never bloated. <laughs> don't put me on stage. Right. Day one, I'm going to look totally on the different day. day 15. They're going to be like, who's him? Right. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Who is right, that? Name? But be but but you're basically saying like be so good and continue on. First be okay with reinventing yourself and then also be okay with like um evolving, so reinventing yourself and then be so good at some point that you're unmatched. And that's got to be the about goal. that. Hmm? That's got to be the goal. That's yeah. got to be the goal. And stay in your lane. Stay in a lane that nobody can even get in. Your lane, hey. your lane, but make it so that nobody, you can't, it's hard. You can't get my lane, sir. Exactly. Man. Exactly. It's so interesting because, you know, I have a nursing assistant school in LA and I have nurses that feel like they're more qualified, like they should have this business. Right. And God was telling me, no, I put the, the unqualified person to make this, you know what I mean? To make this For better people. because I'm not a nurse. I had uh, someone come in, they were doing my blood work or whatever for life insurance. And the lady came in, she's like, is this, this is your school? And I was like, yeah. She says, are you a nurse? And I'm like, no. And she's like, oh, how, how, how do you have a school? And I said, well, who owns the hospitals? <laughs> I was like, not nurses and doctors, you know? And so just really... Like staying in your lane, God gave everybody an assignment and some people miss their assignments because they're looking at other people. They're looking at other people's stuff and they're looking at how they do it and they miss the boat. So now you got to ride on somebody else's boat because you're not on your boat. You know, now you're the passenger when it was, you was the captain. So I'm trying to <laughs> why you're not getting the provision that exactly. you need. Exactly. Try to wonder why you're not getting the supplies Yes. Provide, provided for. Yeah. That you want. Yeah. So it's important. I mean, we keep talking about these things outside of investing, but all of these ideas and mindsets have to be poured into like becoming a woman that's prolific, becoming a woman that's peerless, being a woman that is able to be in her own lane and be confident enough to follow things through how God is asking her to do it. Right. What is my, my other question? Do you believe that every woman can be a real estate investor? Absolutely. Okay. I think every woman should be a real estate yes. investor. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't even know. I, I, I believe that from the bottom of my heart. Mm -hmm. Every woman should be a real estate investor. I think every person should be a real estate investor. It's, it's enough land to go around for everybody, for real, for real. And I talk about this woman um, in the book. She was the empress of Ethiopia. She was the one that actually founded Ethiopia. And she was married five times. Um, but every marriage that she had, she acquired property. And so she became extremely wealthy. And she ended up marrying the king of Ethiopia and basically led the war or declared war against the Italians who, um, you know, they defeated the Italians. But she was extremely strategic. Right. Extremely strategic. And I told my husband because, you know, he's Ethiopian. I was like, it's funny how like in the world people say like women that have experience, like they're kind of frowned upon. Right. She was married five times. But I think that her being married five times and acquiring this these properties and getting the experience made her an exceptional queen where she was able to strategically put people in the right places to win this war 
for Ethiopia and, you know, not even allow their country to be colonized, right? So, like, her and her reputation was they had a word for her in um, in Italian. I don't know how to say it in um, Italian, but it basically meant, who does she think she is? Mm. And they still the saying that these days. Right? But I'm saying that's the kind of woman we need to be. We need to be so, like, driven, not to the point of, like, burning ourselves out, but we need to be so driven that we are like knocking down all these barriers, but we're also focusing on ownership. We're focusing on if I leave this situation, I still need to own. I still need to have, right? Purpose driven. Purpose driven. Purpose driven. Not just driven for the sake of driven, because I know people that do that. But let no me say purpose. This. Yeah. Let me say this. That story actually reminded me about the story at the well in the Bible. Okay. Now, by no means are we trying to put in the light about somebody who has experience, right? Oh. <laughs> who has experience in the room. We're not trying to like make yeah. this like a right thing. I'm just, I'm just saying, she got a little experience. <laughs> she has some experience, right? So for those of you who don't know the story, uh, Jesus meets this woman mm -hmm. at a well mm -hmm. and she is there. No one else is there. Mm -hmm. And he says to her, um, I have some water for you that will make you thirst no more. Mm -hmm. So they get into this conversation and yeah. I don't want to get into the weeds of it because that's a whole Bible study it's session. A whole, right it's a whole Bible class. <laughs> it's a whole Bible study session. <laughs> they get into this conversation yeah. and he basically tells her about herself. And he says, mm -hmm. listen, you, because she was, she's a Samaritan woman. And so mm -hmm. he says, hey, you guys in Samaria, you guys are up in the mountains. Y'all don't even know what y'all worshiping. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, talking about Jewish people, we know yeah. that. Right. So y'all yeah. know the spirit side. Y'all know that y'all know the the spirit side. We know the truth. You need both. And that was the whole conversation. You right. Truth and spirit. You need to worship him in truth and spirit. And so she's like, listen, how are you going to give me something that's make me not thirst anymore? So right. they go back and forth. And then he reveals to her and he says, listen, let me say something about yourself. You don't have five husbands. And in fact, the one you with right now, he ain't even your husband. And so in this conversation, he reveals to her. She gets a divine download about who he is, right? Mm -hmm. And so when she leaves, she goes and tells everybody in her village, okay, about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why this woman was chosen is because clearly she done had five husbands plus another one. She had a certain je ne sais quoi about her that made men respect her. Yes. So she was chosen for that reason. And a lot of times we as women, this is something I had to learn early as a child growing up, right? Mm -hmm. I went through my rebellious, zesty phase, mm -hmm. ate a lot of men. And I realized that God gave me this appeal for a reason. And it wasn't to attract men mm -hmm. for that reason. Mm -hmm. It was to yes. fishers of men. So I realized I was I learned that this gift that I had, I was using it wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I had this gift of being able to attract men, people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I was using it wrong. Mm -hmm. And so my whole point, I'm just bringing it back to that Ethiopian queen. Yeah, Her name was right? Empress Taitu. Empress Taitu. Mm -hmm. She had a gift. And mm -hmm. with these men, she, me being married five times, is like getting somebody, five, five different people say, I want to spend the rest of my life with you is not Listen. a easy thing. Okay. No. <laughs> so if this was this woman's gift, she mm -hmm. was able to get these men to divulge business secrets to her. Exactly. She was that trustworthy. Ooh. To say this is how leadership works mm -hmm. and of course she was she was probably a baddie because she wasn't attracting no <laughs> no broke men okay right. she had the king <laughs> she 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 was dating rich men and then ended up with the king exactly and so sometimes god gives us these gifts mm -hmm. so you got them we, dimples with that's what you got them dimples for exactly. <laughs> period 
I already know. I he made it clear to me. I will make you fishers of men. I said, Listen. You, know, you know, I do Bible study on Tuesdays. Let me do these Bible studies and flash these curly bites. Let me find out. Let me find out. We need to be having a Bible study together. Okay. Ben said we need to do that. Yeah, we do. We do. That was so good, Nicole. It's like t- uh, taking a mental shift on the gifts. Like as women, we think that the assets that we have to bring is just aesthetics or just being beautiful, but that is just an addition, right? But use what God has given you to be fishers of men. Like you said, not don't sleep with the men, be fishers, (laughs) learn their secrets, right? Learn, like sit and watch and, and gather the information and go back and impact yourself first, of course, and and more women. So yeah, that's really really good um, tying that in. And you see what I'm saying? Nicole just leverages everything. She literally leverages everything. But that was that was awesome, definitely awesome. So okay, um, so we talked about being a real estate investor how important it is for every woman to be a real estate investor. And I also talk about, you know, the Proverbs 31 woman being a woman that uh, people have confidence in. But one of the things I haven't really touched on yet is that her children praise her and they call her blessed. And I know you have your baby is so adorable, so adorable, who just had a birthday. I wanted to ask you, how was becoming a mother How did that change you as a real estate investor? Oh, man, that's such a loaded question. I don't, it's changed (laughs) me so much as a, just as a person, just everything. Um, Mm -hmm. I think what it's made me do is be more present just in general, Mm -hmm. right? right? Like, I think I was obsessed with thinking about the future. Like some people are always thinking about the past. Even even when I was a kid, I was just obsessed with living in the future. Now, granted, it's yeah. important to think about the future, but when you are living in the future, you're not being present. Yeah. And so watching him literally transform into this <laughs> young man. Yes. He's three, but I mean, he is amazing. Mm-hmm. It allowed me to be present in my investments. It allowed me to be just really think about like, I am watching the future unfold right now, not thinking about the future, Mm -hmm. but I'm watching it unfold right now. And like, it's put some element of um, pressure on me, but has Mm -hmm. also made me had a more realistic viewpoint of reality because I, I am seeing him as the man that he's going to be right now. So I have to make sure that I set him up. And I don't mean giving him a handout. Yeah. I mean, cultivating him in such a way that he has the wisdom to go through this life. Like me mm-hmm. instilling wisdom in my son is probably the most important thing to me. Yes. Aside from the real estate, real estate mm-hmm. and like leaving him something that's important, but wisdom is number one, because yeah. once you have wisdom, nobody can take that away from you. Exactly. If something happens, you lose it. You can always get whatever back. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. If you have that, that asset in between your ears. Yes. And so it just, I'm just, I'm seeing him as his future self right now. So it's like, okay, we got to make sure that this, yes, this is, this is, this is popping. Plus two, mm-hmm. I want to make sure that I continue to have the time, the free time in my life Mm -hmm. to tend to him. Yeah. You know, and even more time because when he starts, like your son is playing football, when he starts all the AAU stuff and traveling and going Mm -hmm. here and going there, I want to be right. I want to be the most annoying mom ever right there. And they love it. (laughs) I don't care who hates it. I don't even care if he hates it. (laughs) I'm right there. Real annoying. (laughs) She said real annoying. (laughs) And I like what you said, too, um, because I think as women, we're taught to coddle our children. Um, And I think a lot of it is like, oh, I'm going to give my children what I didn't have. 
and not realizing sometimes you not having it made you stronger, right? Um, but one of the things that I say about parenting that I don't really hear people say, it's maybe they're saying it just not the way that I'm saying it, mm -hmm. but I'm not raising children. I'm raising an adult. Like everything that I'm teaching you is to be able to not need me. You know, like my son is off to college, right? He calls me. We have our monthly calls about credit and investments, things that he wants to invest his money in, which is real estate. But like he's out doing his thing. He doesn't need me as much as he used to because I prepared him a long time ago. Like he was five years old. I was teaching him how to make oatmeal, like teaching him how to fold. And I used to always tell him, you're going to be somebody's roommate before you someone's husband. Like you don't want to be a nasty roommate. Like, you know, so just constantly preparing him for the next stage. But also, like you said, I wasn't really present. I don't think in my early 20s with him because I was just just a lot of, you know, toxic relationship, you know, just a lot of that. But when I did recognize that he was my living legacy, like you said, I didn't put it in those words. But when I realized that if I position my son, I'm positioning my grandchildren, I changed the way that I was teaching him. You know, it, it didn't come anymore from like fear and trauma and like, you, you know, like it was more like, okay, son, now you have a lot to lose, right? So think about this and think about that. Now, if this happens, it's okay. I'm here to support you, but it's better if you da 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 da. So coming from being where you're talking down to really speaking up and really giving them, making them feel like they have options in life. They're going to still choose what you pointed them to. Right. But making them feel like, Hey, these are the options. What do you think? You know? And that's what I did with him with, with real estate. Right. I started sending him when he was a, a senior in high school, I was like sending him deals. Right. And I said, okay, son, this is where your credit is. Like I add you to this card. Didn't give him any cards or anything like that until he went to college. But I told him, I said, okay, so if you get this card and you get 26K on this one, would you want to buy a car or would you want to buy a property? And this property, calculate what the return on the investment is. Like, I made it like a real life scenario. So where he started to think, okay, I don't need a car. He went out to, to college and he's like, I don't need a car. I get a scooter. Mom, just get us a property. You know, and so... I gave him an option, but what I did was I was started to focus on the idea that I'm training an adult. I want him to be an independent adult. And so I like that you said that, you know, in regards to how you're, you are raising him and, and how you think. All righty, Nicole. All right, so I have one more question for you. How has following God's principles impacted your life? Because I know like you, you and I have so much in common in the sense of really being able to speak into business from God's principles and just, I just love that, by the way. But um, not using religion. It's not about religion. It's really taking what God said and applying it to all aspects of your life. And I know that that's what you do. That's what I do. So how has following God's principles impacted your life? And then what would you tell a woman that is like outside of that? Or like, how does she even get started to do something like that? Mm. That's a loaded question. How has following God's principles impacted my life? Yes. Um, I th you know what is loaded, but it's actually a very simple answer. Mm -hmm. Um, God's principles are there so that are we as humanists, three part beings, mm -hmm. mind, spirit, body, so mm -hmm. that we can prosper in all three areas. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I heard a saying somewhere that says that um, happiness is not success. Happiness is progress. And mm -hmm. although that's not a scripture, I think it's mm -hmm. true. I think at the end of the day, what we all desperately want is progress, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's really what we're after. Yeah. You know, even if you're, you know, the reason why a lot of people, celebrities, they end up, you know, they get up depressed is because they feel like they're on the top of the world. And it's like, where's the progress? You know, right. 
Mm-hmm. No one, nowhere up here. That's how they feel. That's what mm-hmm. they think. Yeah. Right. We all know that that's not necessarily true. Mm-hmm. And as long as we are prospering in all three of those areas, mm-hmm. that is, that is what will give us joy. Yeah. But really the, the gag is the, the only gag. way to, the gag is the only way to prosper in all three areas, mm-hmm. mind, body, spirit is through God. Ooh. Yes. And I, I, yes, that's the gag. People yeah. try to separate these things. You can't. And when you separate the things, <laughs> that's when you get into idolatry. Yes. And then you find out it wasn't nothing. You find out it wasn't nothing without the yeah. other two. Yeah. You find out it wasn't nothing that it really didn't work because yes. you didn't have the source. You were yeah. worshiping the thing that you thought was prospering yes. in one area of your life. Like, okay, yes. you know, uh, we were at Invest Fest and um, I want to, I don't want to incriminate anybody. I'm not trying to start no beefs or nothing because I have good friendships with some of these people, but someone was doing something with money, like yeah. physical money. Yeah. And I was just like, like literally physical money. And I was just yeah. like, yeah, I, I don't want no parts because when you're using that as a marketing strategy, right. That's idolatry. Now yeah. we're, we're walking in mammon. That's mammon. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So if you're only here to go after the money, mm-hmm. that's when so much sadness comes. Oh, that's yeah. when you're like, oh my goodness, it's not, it's not worth it. Yeah. And absolutely. you don't even realize that you're dabbling in idolatry because you yeah. think that that thing is the source of your happiness. Yes. He says, seek first the kingdom. Right. All these things will be added added unto you. One of the things that I teach people, and it was really just, once I really just got to the principles, and that's why I like, I keep saying principles, right? And I don't want to lose people, but God made it so simple to live it, like the life. Like, once you understand that God's way is simple and, and, and it's true, it's the things that are complicated are lies. Lies are complicated. It's like all over the place. It's all this stuff. It's all this fluff, kind of like the last two years in online courses and stuff. It's really, you know, the truth is truth, right? (laughs) It's just straight to it, right? But one of the things that how I visually see it, um, and I go back to Genesis, and when we read Genesis, we understand that that was really God's blueprint. That's what he wanted, right? And so I always think about God's principles as trying to return us back to the garden, right? He was trying to return us back to what he originally designed for us. And when we read, huh? I disagree. You disagree with returning back to the garden? Mm -hmm. Tell me why. So remember in the garden, they Mm -hmm. ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? And right. so they had life, right? They could eat from the tree of life mm-hmm. and you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm-hmm. And if you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will die. Right. Right. Well, two things happen when you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You, you now have the knowledge of good and evil. You now become very sin conscious. Okay. Then you'll die. Okay. Right. Okay. Two mm-hmm. things. So I think, I mean, when they were in the garden, they didn't mm-hmm. have neither of those things. They just had life. I mm-hmm. think the Bible is just this love letter of God finding a loophole mm-hmm. so that we may have both life mm-hmm. and sin consciousness, have knowledge of good and evil, right? Because what did Jesus do? He came and took this thing of death away from us, but we mm-hmm. are still, we still know the difference between good and evil. Well, that's where I disagree <laughs> <laughs> because when God created everything, he created everything with his with his mind, right? Like everything in creation is still operating how he designed it but us, right? Meaning that there's a process of growing. There's a reaping and the sowing. Everything is still the same, right? Mm-hmm. And, and this is what happened when they ate from the tree. Because people say, well, why did God put the tree in the garden? Well, he's the creator, right? And that's like saying, why do we have ants and then we have something that eats the ants it's literally like it was there for a purpose but it wasn't for the purposes of eating 
it was not there for that reason. And he said, don't do this. He says, and you shall surely die. And they did die. They did. They had a spiritual death, right? Mm -hmm. There was a death. But so he said, all of these things you can have. You can have all of these things. And matter of fact, Adam didn't have to work for it. He didn't have to work for it. He just like manage it. He gave everything. He didn't have them working for anything. The curse was work. He, they then had to leave the garden. So when they ate of the fruit, so I always talk about uh, the enemy and he came to them and he, he told them a truth, but it was perverted. Mm -hmm. He says, he says, uh, she says, well, God said that we shouldn't eat from this tree. He said, and, and then we shall surely die. Well, God had told them something that they had never experienced. He told them that they would die. They had never experienced death. Right. He told them, like, this is the consequence, but they never saw the consequence. Right. So the enemy comes and he says, well, no, you're not going to die. He just doesn't want you to be like him. Mm -hmm. Right. Then when they ate from the tree. God says, now they are like us, knowing good. So God wanted us to be like children. And what does he say we have to be in order to enter the kingdom? Like we children. have to be like children. So that's why I say that he, he has a desire to redeem us back to the garden because we had everything. There was gold in the garden. There was everything that we needed in the garden. But we had to leave the garden because we had then digested you can't undigest what you they had digested the 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 knowledge right and another reason why i believe that they even had to leave the garden is because when god found them they went from walking with god talking with god to being afraid of him mm. he says adam where are you and they they're they're gathering leaves and i talk about that in my book i talk about how when we get off of god's purpose and we have a perverted view of god and we start focusing on things like he's given us abundance, but then we start gathering leaves. Like, why are you in abundance? Why? You're hurting the leaves. Why are you worried about the leaves? Why are you gathering leaves? You got all of this, right? But you're like, uh -huh. but when God found them, he says, we're not uh, afraid. what are you doing? What well, we're trying to, well, who told you, who told you you were naked? Right. And so God's design, he wanted us to be like children. He didn't want us to have the knowledge, but because we had the knowledge, he now says, okay, you can no longer um, uh, have the benefit of this blessing that you won't even appreciate. You don't even see it the way that I was trying to make it for you to see it. Now you got to get out and you have to do this yourself, right? And so the work actually, and I talk about this too, is like, God's desire for his children was never for us to hustle. I know you have the anti-hustle. It Yes, the anti-hustle, right? Pl plugging it. Boom. <laughs> Boom, right? But it was never for his children to hustle, right? And so the, the curse was work. That is the curse. And that's where he says, don't be conformed by the patterns of this world but be transformed by the renewing. And the renewing is him trying to take us back to understanding his principles, his ways, and really opening our eyes to the abundance that he had already given us, right? So I disagree, but it's okay, we good. <laughs> <laughs> I you know what? I love and appreciate how you broke that down. Yeah. I do. He's trying to I redeem us back to the garden. That's it. But what were so you following God's ways. Was. Huh? Tell me what your question was. I'm still going to answer it. How was following God's principle? How did it impact your life? Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say something else. Okay. Mm -mm. Yes, I think, I mean, at the end of the day, for me, um, prospering in my mind, body, and spirit. I see it. Mm. I do. Mm -hmm. You know, and even just looking at that, it keeps me grounded and keeps me and have to have the right perspective on things. Yeah. Because if you don't, this world will trick you into, into depression because you're comparing or you are running a false narrative yes. about what reality is. Yes. And right? he gave I'll, us the truth already. Right. I'll give you, I'll give you an example, right. About how sometimes we can have a false narrative about rea what reality is. Um, years ago, I, I, I dated this guy and 
he had issues because his dad left left them, right? And so every time he would talk about his dad, he would always just say, like, you know, my dad left us or whatever. And then one day he told me about how his stepsister, which is older, molested. He saw the stepsister molest another sister and then found out that the dad had molested the stepsister, right? And so in one of these conversations, I when we were talking about the dad and he just was so frustrated with his dad, every time his dad would like come around and reach out to his son, it was just like a whole thing. And I was just like, you being upset about your dad not raising you, that's just the wrong view. Yeah. Your dad not raising you, he did you a favor. Exactly. You really want this man that molest- a molester right. to raise you? Right. And that's what we do. And I know that's an extreme example. No, that's, that's what awesome we do example. a lot of times when we think about the things that's not going right in our lives. Yes. Yes. And then if you think about like, oh, look at all of these things. Look at how many, how many things I dodged, things that I yes. saw and I didn't see and how yes. I am here. I have a roof over my head. Most of the people mm-hmm. that's going to be listening to this, you have a roof over your head. You have yeah. your health. You're mm-hmm. breathing. You, mm-hmm. you have your right mind. Yes. You winning. Right. You winning. Right. Most of the people that you envying that's got it going on on social media. They ain't right. They go to sleep at night crying their eyes out. They are yes. in pure misery. Yes. Pure misery. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, most of the stuff is fake. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And I wish people understood that It's not for you to look at what someone has because you really don't know what they have to do to have it. So, but if we stick to God's principles and we become a woman that is principled, become a woman that, that takes care of her family, become a woman that's prolific, you ain't got to worry about nothing because God made it very simple and plain for us. Like he's given us the blueprint to follow. Right. Hey, man. And that's it. Yeah. We look, we could be here forever. <laughs> we could be here forever. But I, there's a little section that we have a pretty on paper seg- segment where I ask every lady, what is one beauty secret that you want to share with the audience? Not all the secrets, just one. Just one. Oh, man. One I just started to start going. <laughs> um, one beauty secret that I want to share with the audience. Dang, I got two good ones. Okay. I'm going to do one. Okay. Slide it um, in real quick. <laughs> when I, I don't drink caffeine anymore, oh. but I drink decaf coffee. Okay. I don't know if people know that decaf or coffee is very acidic on your stomach and which yeah. comes out in your skin and it affects you in so many other, mm-hmm. other ways. In order to counteract that, I take a shot of a whole lemon juice because lemon, even though it's acidic, but when it hits your stomach is very alkaline. Hmm. I know. So before I even I do decaf, before I even drink a sip, yeah. I have a lemon squeezer. I squeeze yeah. a whole lemon. It's God awful. <laughs> so you drink the lemon before the coffee. Okay. Now, when I was in, when I was in, uh, in Best Fest, I had went to breakfast right after going to the gym. And so mm-hmm. everybody's all dressed up. I'm sitting there mm-hmm. makeup list. And one of the girls just kept saying like, oh my God, you have zero, your skin is it's amazing. You have zero pores. You look good, wanted, girl. Thank you. I wanted to break it down. I'm 40, y'all. Okay. Listen, check this out. Lemon before the coffee, boo. <laughs> Taking a shot is nasty, but the coffee will taste good. Right. Hey, that's really good. I love that tip. Oh my God. So even Nicole, not, even if it's not counteracting in my head, the way that it is, lemon yeah. is just good for you. Just yeah. In general, like, in general, yeah, in general. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Listen, we have to do this again because we have so much to talk about. We have so yeah. much to talk about. Yeah. And you are like you, like all the women that I've had, like it was very intentional, very, you know, specific on who I wanted, but you definitely embody the principle of prolific. You are the woman that leverages everything. So thank you for coming. And then tell the people how to find you and what you have going on next. Um, You can find me on all platforms at Nicole Purvey. My business is at Better Than Success on all platforms. Um, What I have going on next, I have, when is this going to be aired? October. Okay, good. 
<laughs> okay, what I have going on next, I have not announced it publicly, but by the time you guys watch this, it will be announced publicly. Okay. I am doing my fourth Women in Real Estate Summit event. Mm. It is going to be amazing. This is not just any old conference. Remember, you we got to fly high. I got to gotta yes. go to things where no one else yes. is. And this event is going to be designed for you to walk in with nothing, no okay. money, no nothing, and walk out with a property. I will literally put the people in the room. You're going to be able to get pre-approved mm. for business funding right there on the spot. You're okay. going to be able to get pre-approved for a hard money loan. There's going to be deals in the room. The event is going to climax at towards the end in this event called the Conclave. And during the conclave is where you will be able to take all the information, put the pieces, put it together and walk mm -hmm. out with the property. So you come in with nothing, you leave with something. Yep. All in one day. Okay. okay. Sounds well, good. November Listen. 11th. November 11th. November 11th. This is our fourth eleventh. Okay. I think I'm going to be in Atlanta. And we only got 200. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it ain't I want an amount of deals. Only got 200 spots. Right. Exactly. Listen, hop on. So thank you so much, Nicole, for coming. We have to do this again. You know, I love you, girl. I love you too. I'm yes. so grateful. And I'll see you back in LA in a minute. Yes, we got to do our dinner. Yes. If you really like this episode, today we talked about being prolific, the principle of prolific. And we met with Nicole Purvey, who is a real estate investor, a general contractor, she has a community where she is helping other people do exactly what she does. And being a woman that is prolific is all you're being a woman that not only focuses on where you are, but where you're going, but also staying present. So I hope you guys like this episode. If you liked it, make sure you like, subscribe and share. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. It's a uh, niece of the shade. They was dying by my calling. Now they peeping away.